Welcome to the Build Your Reiki Business Podcast. I'm Christian of Standing Stones Healing, founder of the Reiki Business Collective and creator of the Build Your Reiki Business Program, sending blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business. Greetings, welcome, and thank you for tuning in. I'm Christian of Standing Stones Healing, and I'm so honored to welcome you to another episode of the Build Your Reiki Business podcast. Thanks so much for being here. In this episode, we're going to talk about insurance. Now, these episodes are only 20 minutes, so we cannot cover everything there is to know about insurance in 20 minutes. But I'm going to give you three things that I want to encourage you to look for as you are shopping for Reiki business insurance. And I also want to make sure to mention that this information pertains to U.S.-based Reiki businesses. I do not know anything about insurance for Reiki business in other countries. And so please do know that this episode is dealing specifically with insurance insurance for U.S.-based Reiki businesses. So thank you. So you may be wondering, do I even need insurance for my Reiki business? And The truth is that because in the United States, Reiki is largely unregulated, um, no, you probably do not need insurance for your Reiki business. Now, hold on before you go scream into the rooftops. Yes, Christian told me I don't need Reiki business insurance, so forget it. Hold on just one minute, okay? (laughs) Because Reiki is largely unregulated in the United States, it means that largely there's no requirement to have insurance for your Reiki business. Now, when I say largely, there are, of course, exceptions to this. Please always, always check with your state, county, town, local regulations, even if you rent office space, your landlord, because any or all of these may require insurance for you to operate a Reiki business. And so even though by and large, there's no regulation on Reiki, you may still be required to have Reiki insurance for something as simple as the landlord of the commercial office space that you are renting. So please be aware of that and always, always check your own specific uh, situation to make sure that you are following the necessary regulations. But Because Reiki is so largely unregulated, you very well could own and operate a Reiki business without insurance. Now, just because you can do something doesn't mean it's a good idea. So for instance, you could drive a car without car insurance, and there are plenty of people who do. But if you get into some kind of accident not such a good idea to not have car insurance. So be aware that even though you might not be required to have insurance for your Reiki business, it's still a good idea. I get this question frequently. Christian, do I need Reiki business insurance? I'm only seeing a few clients a week. Is this something that I even need? And the answer is It is a good idea because you can have a problem. You can have liability with one single client. And so it's important for you to know the risks. Each of us as Reiki business owners needs to know the need to know the risks and we need to be responsible for taking the risk of not having insurance. 
And for your own Reiki business, it's important for you to be aware of the risks, to be aware of your situation, and to be aware of the possibility of needing insurance. You know, insurance is the kind of thing where we get it and we hope that we never need it. We get car insurance and we hope that we never have an accident, but we know that accidents do happen. And when they do, we're really glad to have insurance. It's the same thing with your Reiki business. If you have some kind of an issue, you're going to be really glad that you have it. Now, are you definitely going to have an issue in your Reiki business? No, no, not definitely, but you'll be really glad if you have it, if you need it. Now, the question that I also get is, well, Christian, I have an LLC. So if I have an LLC, I don't need insurance, right? And that is actually incorrect. This is a, uh, a, a common misconception that if you have an LLC, you can't get sued or you don't need insurance. And insurance and an LLC, and if you're wondering what an LLC is, please check the previous episode a few weeks ago on the LLC uh, for information on uh, what that is. But an LLC does not protect you from having liability. An LLC means that your personal liability is limited, but an LLC does not protect you from having some kind of liability for your Reiki business. So let's say, for instance, that you see a client and they fall off of your Reiki table. Or as they are coming into your Reiki room, they trip on the rug and fall. And maybe they break an arm. Well, they're going to need to see a doctor, go to the ER, get x-rays, get a cast. And so you very well could have liability with one client. You could have your very first client trip on your rug, fall off the Reiki table. Now, is that probable? No, but it is possible. And if that happens and you don't have insurance, then your business needs to cover the expenses of the ER visit, the x-rays, the cast, the doctor's visits, the removal of the cast, All of that is something that your Reiki business is going to have to pay for if you don't have insurance. So it's really important to consider the risks and um, whether or not it's worth it to bankrupt your Reiki business potentially. I'll give you another example of um, where you might run into an issue. Let's say that you are teaching Reiki. And for your students during the 21 day cleanse, you encourage them to fast and you tell all of your students, you're going to go without food for 21 days. Now, I don't know of any Reiki teacher that would actually do this, but you never know. And so you have students who get sick. They need to go to the doctor. They're dehydrated. They have all kinds of um, medical problems because of the fasting. And now you have a lot of bills that your Reiki business needs to cover. So these are the kinds of things that we might not want to think about And we might not want to admit that can happen. You know, we're very fond of saying that Reiki can do no harm. You don't need insurance. Reiki can do no harm. I have seen this too. But even though Reiki can do no harm, we can do harm as people. Accidents can happen. Tripping on the rug or falling off of the table is not about Reiki. (laughs) And so anytime you have a business, anytime that you are offering a service, a product, anything, 
you have the potential to have liability. You have the potential to have some problems and challenges when you are a business owner. And having insurance is just part of being a responsible business owner. So as you are searching for Reiki business insurance, I want you to be on the lookout for a few things. Three things that I want you to be looking for when you are reviewing insurance policies for your Reiki business. There are two kinds of insurance that you will be wanting to explore for your Reiki business. They are general liability and professional liability. Now, general liability is going to cover things like physical injury. So the example of the person tripping over the rug or falling off of the Reiki table, that kind of claim falls under general liability coverage. So if you have general liability, it's going to cover things like the physical injury claims. Professional liability is also called um, E and O or uh, errors and omissions. And this is the important phrase that you want to look for whenever you are searching for uh, professional liability insurance, errors and omissions. And this kind of insurance covers you for, with the example of teaching and telling your students to, oh, don't eat anything for 21 days. That's part of the 21-day cleanse. <laughs> um, that is uh, the kind of claim that would fall under professional liability, which covers things like giving advice, teaching, um, you know, we do quite a bit of this as Reiki practitioners frequently. We will often advise clients on things to do after a session. We will give them some uh, feedback and some um, uh, counsel. And so that's the kind of thing that Reiki business owners frequently do that would fall under professional liability coverage. So these are the two kinds of business coverage that most Reiki business owners are going to want to look into and get. You know, Reiki is infinitely flexible which means that the kind of Reiki business that you might have is infinitely flexible, which means that you could be doing all kinds of things in your Reiki business. So you may want other types of coverage, um, other um, uh, types of insurance to look for, but these are really the two main ones that you'll want to be on the lookout for. The good news is that Many policies, most policies that Reiki business owners would get for their business combine general and professional into one policy. And so you typically don't need to purchase these separately. They are typically part of the same policy that you would get from an insurance carrier. But be on the lookout for that, number one, to check for general and professional coverage. Number two, as you are shopping for insurance for your Reiki business, I want to encourage you to be on the lookout for the type of insurance uh, known as claims made versus occurrence. So these are two different kinds of insurance policies. A claims made policy is one in which when you have the policy, then you are insured. So as long as you are paying for the policy and you have the policy, then it's going to cover you. So let's give an example of this. Um, if you are uh, seeing a client and you um, have that injury where the client breaks their arm and they break their arm uh, and it is um, January, and your uh, insurance runs out 
in February, and then all of the claims come in and you need to pay in March. Well, your insurance that you no longer have on a claims made policy is not going to pay for that claim because you no longer have the insurance. So the claims made policy only pays if you have the insurance at the time when you need the payment to be made. An occurrence policy, on the other hand, is going to cover you no matter when the claim is made, but based upon when the incident occurs. And so if the person falls off your Reiki table in January, you stop paying on the policy, it ends in February, and the claim is made in March, guess what? The occurrence policy will cover you because you had the insurance when the incident occurred. So which is better, claims made or occurrence? That is up to you and the right needs for your Reiki business. In the Build Your Reiki Business program, we go into much greater depth on these topics in 20 minutes. Um, we can't cover too, too much on them, but uh, the Build Your Reiki Business program really does go into depth on these differences and uh examples and offers some common Reiki business insurers as well. But when it comes to insurance, yes, it's encouraged that you have insurance for your Reiki business, even when you have a smaller Reiki business and are not seeing too many clients. Remember, you can have a problem with one client and um, you could have one, your very first client, one client fall off of your Reiki table. That can happen. Uh, so yes, it's a good idea to have Reiki business insurance. General and professional liability are the two main types you'll want to be on the lookout for. They often come in the same policy. You'll want to be checking the claims made versus occurrence. And finally, number three, I want to encourage you to check the coverage limits. As you look at Reiki business insurance, you'll probably see some coverage limits that are pretty high, you know, hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars. And you may look at those numbers and say, well, Christian, I'm never going to need that amount. I'm never going to need that much coverage. You know, how much does it cost for one broken arm? <laughs> but here's the thing. Doctors are expensive. Medical bills are expensive lawyers are expensive. And so if you have a claim where you need to get lawyers involved, you need to have lots of medical payments, those can all really add up. And so when you're adding up all of those numbers, a couple hundred thousand dollars actually isn't so much after all especially when you're looking at the kind of example of the Reiki teacher who's telling all their students to fast and they're not eating and you've got all kinds of students going to the hospital and all kinds of claims and claims for loss of work and uh, claims for um, emotional distress, et cetera, et cetera. You've got multiple students suing you. Holy cow, that is uh, a lot of money that you're going to need to have for your coverage limits on your policy. And so, you know, you might look at a policy and say, $2 million, that's so much money. I'll never need that in my Reiki business. No, you may never need that in your Reiki business, and let's hope not. But you never know what might happen. And so when you see these larger amounts, they do add up if you have multiple claims and they're really not so large as you might think. It's also the kind of thing where when it comes to those coverage limits, you want to check, is that per occurrence? Is that per claim? Is that for the policy year? 
or is that for the whole policy and that's all that the insurance company is going to pay out? So that's something that I want to encourage you to check on as well, those coverage limits and uh, making sure that whatever policy you select, it does have adequate coverage limits for the kind of Reiki business activity that you do, for the number of clients that you see, and even remembering that uh, even if you're only seeing a couple of clients, those dollar figures really can add up. So I want to encourage you to please make sure to check that as well. So those are the top things to be on the lookout for when you are shopping for Reiki business insurance. Um, Again, that is really covered a lot in the Build Your Reiki Business program because it is so important. But those are the basics to know about Reiki business insurance. So thank you so much for tuning in. I do answer some questions about insurance in the free Reiki Biz Kit. You can get that at standingstoneshealing.com slash Reiki Biz Kit. That is a free kit. And in the FAQ, I do answer answer a couple of questions about insurance. So please do check that out, standingstoneshealing.com slash Reiki Biz Kit. But thank you so much for tuning in. I'm sending lots of blessings and lots of best wishes to your Reiki business. Thanks for tuning in to the Build Your Reiki Business podcast. Please like, share, subscribe, and send to a friend. Learn more about the Build Your Reiki Business program at standingstoneshealing.com slash build. Sending blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business.